I found one good tip to remember. You know, this is your T, and this is a cup or C or E, whatever you tell. So if you are remembering this, the carpal bones are arranged this way. This is your proximal end, and this is your distal end. That means this is the phalanx, and this is your radius. If you are drawing the radius this way, and this is your ulna. So, see, this is your, you are starting with the scaphoid, then your lunate, and then your trichetria, and then your PC form. So, the proximal end is arranged like an U, whereas so four bones, three basically forming and PC form is uh, sitting over the top of the trichotia. And the distal row is arranged like a T. So just in front of, so this was scaphoid, again scaphoid, there is a mnemonic, Tarjan, I, I have seen very fond of that mnemonic, C looks too pretty, try to catch a C is your scaphoid, look is your lunate, Two is trichotrium, and P pretty is your PC form. And the distal row, again, we are having the four bone, but arranged in a straight to a fashion. So here there is, we are starting with the, from the radial side is your trapezium, then is your trapezoid, then is your capitate, capitate is a big bone, and then is your hamet, hamet is also big. So it's like an U, over that, there is a T, or maybe a cup, over that, there is a T. And then, of course, the other different pharyngeal bones, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth one. So, keeping this in your mind, I'll be going, just again, we'll be remembering, see? This is opposite way. This is your U, inverted U, and this is your T. So, starting from the radial side, we are having the scaphoid, then we are having the lunate, then we are having the trichotrium, and then your pisciform. And starting from the radial side again, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamet. This is an MRI, and this is a schematic diagram of this MRI. Here also you can see that the proximal row is like a U or inverted U or a cup. And the distal row is like a T. Middle, the largest bone is your capitate and beside that is your amet. X-ray also. Now here, one important point to remember or to know, you see this Carpal bones forms joint with the radius. So like this is scaphoid, this is your lunate. So they form the, the radio scaphoid and the radio lunate joint, but nothing, no joint with the trichotrium with the, you know, the ulna. Why? Because here is your TFCC, triangular fibrocartilaginous complex. So there is a, you know, meniscus like thing and there are a few other tendons will be coming in the detail about that. Uh, no PFCC complex. So there is no real joint with the ulna with the trichotrium, but uh, the two other scaphoid with the radium, radius and uh, lunate with the radius, these joints are there. These are in the proximal row. And PC form bone, sometimes it is called, it is not, you know, really like carpal bone. This is, uh, you know, this is a sesamoid bone within the your flexor carpi ulnaris. And this is a cadaveric section, starting again from this, this is your radius, this is your ulna, so this is your scaphoid, this part is like an inverted U, as I told you, this is like a T. So scaphoid, lunate, trichotrium, and those are very important things to remember here. That many a times, so you know, even when I was you not know, taking the examinations of the last one year fellows, I was asking them 
that when you are putting your probe over the proximal carpal tunnel, you are putting the probe basically over the tubercle of the scaphoid here and the PC form here. Then what are the bone we are seeing on the base? Lunate do not come there. So the other bones that are seen here, apart from this tubercle of the scaphoid and the PC form, the other bones will be coming little bit of hamate, capitate, but not the lunate. So this is for the proximal carpal tunnel. So here again, this section you can understand here is the proximal carpal tunnel. So this side is your scaphoid, this side is your PC form, and hot bones you can see sometimes little bit of trachytum is also seen you know, sometimes over the ultrasound and hamate. This is your capitate and this is your scaphoid. So these are the bones which are seen in the, where you are holding the probe in the proximal part of the carpal tunnel. Whereas when you are sliding the, you know, the probe to little distally, then what we can see? Then we can see the trapezium, tubercle of the trapezium. And on the base, we can see the trapezoid, capitate and hamate. Basically, hook of the hamate is seen. Uh, over that and the the diameter of this distal carpal tunnel is smaller than the proximal carpal tunnel. So these are the contents. You can here you can see this diameter and this diameter here. The diameter of the distal part of the carpal tunnel is narrower than if you are comparing with the proximal part of the carpal tunnel. And now just quickly I'll be going to the different bones and with which <coughs> which one is articulating. So as I was telling the earlier, the radius is articulating with lunate and your scaphoid. So the scaphoid again is having the different articular surface. This side it is articulating with the radius, here it is articulating with the lunate, here it is articulating with the capitate, here it is articulating with the trapezoid and here it is articulating with the trapezium. And it is a long bone. This part is broad part, distal part, and this proximal part is a smaller, narrower part. And this part is your neck. So the neck is the common area of the scaphoid fracture. But again, scaphoid fracture can also be there in the proximal end as well. We'll be showing you some of the, you know, the pathology fractures slides of the ultrasound, or you can see the fracture is also possible to the other part, but the most common area of the scaphoid fracture and you have to remember the scaphoid fracture is the most common carpal bone fracture. It's most common area of the fracture is your neck. And this area where the, it is base is formed, you know, the anatomical snap box. So anatomical snap box base is again formed by this scaphoid. Then come your the lunate. So lunate with which it is articulating, it is articulating with the radius proximally. It is articulating with the scaphoid, capitate, little bit of hamid as well and trichotry. Then PC4, this PC4 bone is basically, you know, the, the dissected out a little bit on the lateral. So PC4 is uh, articulating with the <coughs> trichutrium. Oh, sorry, this is trichutrium. So trichutrium is uh, uh, articulating with the hamate, lunate, and little bit of capitate as well. And then PC4, PC4 is articulating only with the trapezium, not with the other carpal bones. Then coming to the distal row, distal row from the radial side, we are starting with the trapezium. Trapezium is articulating with the metacarpal one and the metacarpal two, as well as the scaphoid as and trapezoid. The trapezium bone is not that very big. And trapezoid is still smaller. Trapezoid is articulating with the second metacarpal bone, trapezium on this side, capitate on this side, and scaphoid on this side. And then the capitate. Capitate is a very big bone. The distal part is very broad, just like the scaphoid, the distal part was broad. Here also the distal part is very broad. And it is again, you know, articulating with almost all, it's lying in the center of the, all the carpal bones. And it is articulating, except the trapezium, it is articulating with all the carpal bones. And then is your habit. Habit again is a, have a peculiar, that it is having a hook that is projecting in front, the bowler side. And this is again one of the important common area where this can be fractured. And again, this fracture sometimes difficult to make a, make a diagnosis with the X-ray and sometimes, you know, the either MRI or even ultrasound will be helpful to make a diagnosis of the 
hook of the habit structure. So these are the eight, the carpal bones, and uh, they will be coming to the distal wrist. And at the end, I'll be talking about a little bit about the ligaments as well. So TFCC as I was telling, triangular fibrocartilaginous complex. So what are there in the triangular fibrocartilaginous? These all pictures are taken from our book. So triangular fibrocartilaginous complex, what are the components there? One is your, the, the triangular fibrocartilage. Here it is written as AD. It's like, you know, the, the meniscus there. Apart from that, there is ulnar collateral ligament, the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon, three ligaments, allo, you know, the lunate, allo tapetate, allo trichetrium, these three ligaments here. And apart from that, the dorsal and the ventral distal radio ulnar ligament. So these all together is your triangular fibrocartilaginous complex. But again, triangular fibrocartilaginous complex is better evaluated with an MRI rather than your, your ultrasound. What is the most important cause is your this projection. This projection on the lateral side, you know, not allows us to look nicely about the triangular fibrocartilage. And triangular fibrocartilage and triangular fibrocartilaginous complex. Triangular fibrocartilaginous complex is all together. All those ligaments, some of the tendons together is a triangular fibrocartilaginous complex. And triangular fibrocartilage is like an articular disc. Now come to the extensor tendons. So as we already mentioned earlier, the extensor tendons, we are having the two layers, superficial layers and the distal layers. Finally, when they are you know, entering at the wrist towards the carpal bone, so they are, there is going through a tunnel. And this tunnel has a common roof, which is your extensor reticulum. And this extensor reticulum sends the different septa. Why? Because these tendons will not be, you know, overlapping over the others. They are separated so that they can do their functions very distinctly. So all the all they are by a tunnel with all the different septa, and that way, so the whole of this dorsal compartments have been divided into the six compartments. So what are these six compartments? First compartments starting, you know, from <coughs> the radial side. The first compartment. What are the muscles there? Again, to remember here that it starts with the longus, brevis, longus, brevis, longus, and then extens extensors. So, coming to the first compartment, first compartment of the radial side. So, we are having that two important tendons extensor policies, abductor policies, longus, and extensor policies, brevis. So it starts with the APL, abductor policies longus, and then comes extensor policies brevis. Then the second compartment, what is there? Extensor carpi radial is longus again. After the brevis, the longus will come. And then again, the extensor carpi radial is brevis. So abductor policies longus, extensor policies brevis. Then again, here, it will come with longus. So here is the brevis, it will be coming longus. So extensor carpi radial is longus, then again extensor carpi radial is brevis, and then there is your lister tubercle. So this lister tubercle is one of the very important, you know, the areas from where normally we start the scanning. We can palpate the lister tubercle, and first we try to place our probe about lister tubercle, and one side will be your heart compartment, another side will be having the second compartment. And then if you are going more towards the radial side, we'll be getting the first compartment. So first compartment was a abductor policies longer, extensor policies brevis. Second again, your extensor policies carpal radial is longus and brevis. And then comes the extensor policies longus. So after brevis, again, longus will be coming. So here in this compartment, heart compartment, there is only one tender. And after that, in the fourth compartment, there are two important. One is your extensor digitorum communis, where there are four tendons. And below that, there is another, what is known as 
extensor indices. So extensor indices and this extensor policies longer, they are the deep layer muscles. Whereas the superficial layer are layer muscles are the tendons are this extensor digitorum, the fifth compartment, which is extensor digiti minimi, and the sixth compartment, extensor carpi ulnaris, these are the superficial layer muscles. So the third compartment muscles, that means abductor poly, extensor policies longer and the extensor indices will be crossing, passing below these extensor tendons. We'll be demonstrating it when we'll be scanning over the volunteers. So as telling, many a times, many areas, these tendons are crossing over the others, particularly the superficial layer, as I told you, they are coming from the, the, your, the lateral side, that is your, the lateral epicondyle, and they are coming towards the radius, whereas the deeper muscles, they are coming from the ulnar side, and they are coming towards the radial side. Like these muscles, the first compartment muscles, they are the deep layer muscles. So these deep layer muscles will be ultimately going to this side. So they'll be crossing over the second compartment, second layer, and there'll be proximal intersection. But again, what was not shown there, that this will be coming below this layer, these muscles as well. That means the extensor digitorum communis tendons as well. And then they'll be inserted. So they are the deep layer muscles. So again, let me recapitulate, uh, let us recapitulate. So the, the extensor compartments are six. First compartment, abductor policies longus and extensor policies plates. The second compartment, these are, but again, as I told earlier, these are the deep layers, deep extensor muscles. So ultimately they'll be crossing the other superficial muscles and going deep into the form. Then the second layer, the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis nevis, they'll be going straight and they'll be inserted into the second and the third, you know, the digits. Whereas the, this will be coming into the second. So, so sorry, so the, the extensor policy is longer. So it'll be coming as a first. So what will happen? Again, this will be crossing these two second layer, second compartment muscles distally, and that is known as the distal intersection syndrome. But as I was telling, there are a few other areas where also this intersection is possible. Like one of them is your extensor indices. This comes from this lateral side, as I told you, and ultimately they will be inserted into the second. Whereas this extensor carpi radialis brevis will be inserted into the third. So the, again, there is a possible areas of the intersection this time. All will be showing you we will be demonstrating it to the volunteers. Now, this is again one of the you know, section, uh, proximal intersection as I, as I was telling you, the first compartment muscles, apparatal policies longer and the extensor policies brevis, they are the deep muscles. They'll be crossing over the, uh, the second compartment muscles, extensor carpi radial is longer and brevis. So this is the area where the proximal intersection. That means when these tendons are crossing over the others, so, and if there is an overuse, overuse, so there can be inflammatory, you know, it changes because of this overuse and that can be the possible source of the pain. And that can be diagnosed with the ultrasound as well nicely. So this is the proximal intersection where the first compartment muscles are, you know, going crossing over the second compartment muscles. And distal extensive policies longer, this is going into the, you know, the first and the, this extensor carpi radial is longus and brevis, they're going to the second and third. So they are crossing here distally. And this is known as the areas for the distal intersection syndrome. Now coming to the nerves. So the three important nerves there, one is your ulnar. So ulnar one and half, both on the dorsal as well as in the ventral side. Whereas the median, it is the, the anterior, the polar side the three and a half, and little bit over the tip of the fingers of the first three, three and a half, sorry, over the, over the extensor side. And the radial, this is the radial side, mostly in the extensor side, and little bit here at the base of the thumb, which is supplied by the radial area. Radial now means this is a superficial 
radial one, not the deep one. But the deeper one, deep, that is in the form of the posterior interstitial nerves, they come still into the, the, the wrist, up to the wrist. And that nerve also can be seen just below the fourth compartment in nerves. So we'll be trying to search that the terminal branch of the posterior interstitial nerve as well in the fourth compartment. So these are the nerves. I'm just skipping through and now the ligaments. So the ligaments, as I was telling, that there are extrinsic ligaments as well as the intrinsic ligament. Extrinsic ligament means that the uh, ligaments which are within the carpal bones, they are the intrinsic ligaments. And the extrinsic ligament, which are connected, the carpal bones with the other bones, like the radius ulna, they are the extrinsic ligaments. So now, this is your lunate. So very easy to remember this way. So these are arranged in V-shaped manner. The first the lunate is joining with the radius and this is joined by the two important ligaments. One is short radial ligament that is coming vertically. And then one part of the V is your long radial lunate ligament. And on the ulnar side, we are having the ulnar lunate ligament. So this is forming one V, radial lunate and ulnar lunate. And there is a short radial lunate ligament. Now, just after the lunar heart is there, we are having the capitate, and this is forming a larger V. So, how it is forming larger V? Again, these are the muscles which is coming from the radius to the capitate. But to come from the radius to the capitate, it has to cross the scaphoid as well. So, the ligament name, what is the name of the ligament? Radio scapho capitate ligament. So, this is forming the larger view, larger view, one part of the view. And again, here, this is your, the <coughs> radio is alno capitate. So, radio scapho capitate and alno capitate, these are forming the bigger part of the view on these two sides. Apart from that, we are having the radial collateral ligament, we are having the ulnar collateral ligament, and we are having the very small, small, intrinsic muscles between the, the scaphoid and the lunate. These muscles are very nicely, easily, this ligament is easily seen, particularly in the dorsal side. So the scaphoid and lunate, lunate and tricuterial, then you scaphoid and capitate, trapezium and trapezoid, trape, uh, scaphoid and you know, the trapezium, you know, all, all the muscles, they are basically attached together. And all are covered by the joint capsule and all those ligaments are basically nothing but the part of the capsule. So these ligaments are reinforcing the, the, the capsule of the, the wrist joint. And then distally, they are attached with the metacarpal base of the metacarpal bones. So here, this is one of the cadaveric dissection. So here you can see this is a, you know, this is your lunate, this is your capitate. So this ligament is your short radio lunate ligament. And the other two part of the view, V, sorry, this from the lunate, one part of the V is your long radio lunate ligament. And this is your ulnar lunate ligament, one V. And the larger V, which is starting from the capitate, is your, this one, this is your radio scapho uh, the radio uh, uh, scapho capitate. And this is your ulnar capitate. These are the larger Vs. And apart from that, as we discussed earlier, so in between the intrinsic ligaments that they are in, uh, between the all the carpal bones, there are the intrinsic uh, ligaments. So these are the different intrinsic ligaments between the different carpal bones. And this is from the dorsal side. From the dorsal side, some of the ligaments are very easily seen and some of the ligaments are not easily seen, not in all persons easily seen. Uh, dorsal side, the most easily seen ligament is your scapholunate ligament. This is the one of the intrinsic ligament, which is very nicely seen. <coughs> now the sonar anatomy. So mostly we start with the dorsal compartment. And as we told earlier, that we always palpate the listed tubercle. So this is the listed tubercle. And after that, we try to find out the second compartment and third compartment. So the radial side, we are having the second compartment and we are having the two tendons. Extensor carpal radial is longus and extensor carpal radial is brevis. And just immediately towards the ulnar side, 
we are having the extensive policies longer. And after that, we are having the fourth compartment where we are having the extensive digital communities and extensive indices. Then when we are moving more towards the radial side, just about the radial styloid process, we'll be having the two tendons together, abductor policies longus and extensor policies brevis. And if you are going more distally, so the radial artery will be here, which will be gradually coming here, when you'll be slipping from the radial styloid process into the scaphoid, into the anatomical snap box, we'll be able to see the radial artery there. Then second compartment, just besides the radial side of the distal tubercle. And we'll be again showing this one, that when we'll be going over the second compartment, more proximally, we'll be seeing that extensor policies babies and abductor policies longus, they'll be crossing over it and we'll be able to see it. And that is the area for the proximal intersection syndrome. So this was the proximal intersection area. And then the distal intersections, distal intersection again, we can see it by two way. What we can do is we can follow these two tendons and we'll be seeing that the extensor policies longus is gradually going over this, or we can do the other ways as well. We can follow the extensor policies longus and we can go more distally where you'll see that this is crossing over the extensor for carpi radius uh, longus and brevis, and that is the area for the distal intersection syndrome. Fourth and fifth compartment, fourth already is told that there are you know, uh, the extensor digital communities, extensor indices. These are the fourth compartment. So in the fourth compartment, we'll be having the five tendons. So four tendons of the extensor digitum communities or extensor digitum, and one tendon of the extensor indices. In the fifth, we are having the one tendon, that is your extensor digit minimi. And in the sixth, we are having the extensor carpi alliance. So this will be all be seeing. Then this is your over the anatomical snap wasp. If you are holding this probe this way, one side will be coming the radius, another side will be coming the metacarpal bones, and we'll be seeing the trapezium, we'll be seeing the scaphoid, and we'll be able to see the, uh, the radial artery pulse peak there. And this is one of the area where the scaphoid, you know, this is the area of the neck of the scaphoid, which is the area where the, the fracture scaphoid is coming. And uh, these are the proximal, you know, uh, the dorsal side, where we can see that starting from the radius, we can see all the different metacarpal bones, and we can also see the different ligaments what this bones. So in that way, starting from the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, we can see all the small carpal bones and the intrinsic, the ligaments between the carpal bones. And then TFCC, as you already told, TFCC is better seen by the um, uh, MRI, but there the TFCC has the different components. Some of the components of the TFCC can be seen with the ultrasound. Then comes the polar, polar side or the anterior side or the flexor side. So these are the this is the proximal part of the carpal tunnel, and this is the distal part of the carpal tunnel. So carpal tunnel contents already have discussed. One side we are having the scaphoid, another side tubercle of the scaphoid, another side is the proximal, and another side we are having the PC4. And there are the two tendons. One is your flexor carpi ulnaris, a flexor carpi. Uh, radialis and this is your flexor carpi ulnaris. These two are not the content of the carpal tunnel. They are sitting over the two bones. And then this is your flexor retinaculum. Also, you have to remember that the ulnar artery, ulnar nerve, they are also not the content of the carpal tunnel. So, what are the nine tendons? So, four tendons of the flexor digitum superficialis, four tendons of the flexor digitum profundus and the flexor policies longus. These nine tendons are the contents of the carpal tunnel along with the median nerve. And just above the median nerve, you know, there's the side of the flexor carpi radialis, we'll see the 
another branch that is a permacutaneous branch of the medial nerve. Now, when we are going to the distal part of the, uh, of the carpal tunnel, as we told, distal part of the carpal tunnel, the diameter is smaller. So here, the one side we are having the trapezium tubercle, another side we are having the, the hook of the hamid. Just above that, we'll be having the radial, uh, sorry, ulnar artery and nerves by the side of that. And we'll be having the median nerve. And again, all the contents of the carpal tunnel will be still here in this distal part of the carpal tunnel. Then, if we are holding the probe longitudinally, we'll be able to see these three bones together nicely. One is the distal part of the radius, then the lunate, then the, uh, the capitate, and we'll be able to see these ligaments. This ligament will be your short radio lunate ligament, and this will be your radio luno capitate ligament. So, this is your again. The, the Goen's canal. The Goen's canal again, the, it, is the, it is not within the carpal tunnel, it is just outside the carpal tunnel. So the base is formed by the, you know, the flexor reticulum, and within that, we are having the ulnar artery, ulnar now, and the other tendon that is your extensor carpi, flexor carpi ulnaris. Radius. Capho capitate ligament, as we already discussed earlier, the alno capitate ligament, the radio lunate ligament. We'll be trying to see all those different ligaments when we'll be scanning over the vertebrates. So, up to this, if you are having any questions, I'll be demonstrating now over the volunteers. And as I said, because the wrist is a superficial structure, so the probe selection is your what? Is a linear probe, or even better is your. We are using this Copy. X HD probe, and uh, you know XD probe is almost like that of the uh, the um, what is that called the hockeystick probe. So hockeystick probe, we also have the hockeystick probe, but even this resolution of this is better than the hockeystick probe. So I'll be demonstrating with this uh, the linear probe, but linear probe or hockeystick probe, these are the choice. So first, I'll be starting the scanning with the dorsal compartment. And as I told, so my aspect marker is on the ulnar side. So that means this side is your ulnar side, and this side is your radial side. So what I, I'm holding the probe now, I'm holding the probe over the listed tubercle. But when we are scanning in the dorsal wrist, we are palpating the, this is the listed tubercle. So putting my probe over the listed tubercle. So what we can see here, this is the listed tubercle. And this is your first, third compartment. This is your second compartment. This is your fourth compartment. This is your fifth compartment. So again, So, left side of the screen is my aspect mark. So, I am holding the probe over the listed tubercle and then I am gradually coming towards the radial side. So, I will be starting, this is the second compartment. I will be coming more radially and I will be coming to the first compartment. So this is your first compartment muscle for tendons. So what are the first compartment tendons? So we are having the 
abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. And the hyperechoic line there is your. So hyperechoic line. So these are the two tendons, and this is your radial styloid. And if you are going more on this side, you can see the radial artery. But when I'm putting it there, we can see the abductor pollicis longer, extensor pollicis brevis. And when I'm going this belly, following this, you can see the radial artery is coming below these tendons. And you can see that styloid process is vanishing. And the bone what is coming is your scaphoid bone. So this is your scaphoid. So now what is there? Switch. So now what is there? This is your abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, radial artery, and this is your scaphoid. So this is your first compartment. And then we are coming to the closer to the lista tubercle. And you can see here, this is your second compartment. This. So this was your lista tubercle. And this was your two tendons. What are these two tendons? Extensor carpi radial is longus. And extensor cut by radial is previous. Now, again, unfreeze. So now you just, if we are following these two tendons, if we are following these two tendons, see what is happening from the radial side, something is coming. We just see some black, white mixtures, tendons in the martinianus junctions are coming. And now the black things are coming over the second compartment muscles. Can you appreciate? And gradually, gradually going, see the one, and then another over is lifting over the second compartment muscles. So this is the area of the proximal intersection. So this was your second compartment tendons, the two tendons, again, see it. And then when I'm going more proximally over the second compartment, two tendon, extensor carpet radial is longus and brevis. What you can see is the muscles are just crossing over these two tendons. Abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis first, and then abductor pollicis longus. So they are crossing, as I told, these are the deep layer muscles. So they'll be going deeper, you see, they are going deeper. So this is the area for the proximal intersections here. And now, if we are following these two tendons, this study, you know, this was the list of tubercle again. These are the second compartment tendons. And if I'm following this, see the third compartment, you see something is coming from now from the Alnar side. You see? Please. So this is the extensor policies longus. So these are the two second compartment tendons, and this is slipping over it. So this is your area of the distal intersection syndrome. Again, see it. So this is that list of tubercle. This is the two tendons. And if I'm following these two tendons, this tally, see one tendon is slipping, 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 and then going towards the first digit. So this is the area where it is slipping. The two tendons is your distal intersection syndrome. So this is again the list of tubercle. And these are the two tendons. Now let us go to the third compartment. So here, just beside the lister tubercle is your third compartment. So this is your extensor 
policies longest which one yes. so this is your list of paper two and this is your extensor policies longest now let us see this proximally and distant so just follow this tendon what is happening when i am following this tendons proximal see this tendons is becoming my tendinous junction here see part of the muscles and part of this tendons black and white mixture and if i am following it more proximally see here what is happening it is going below the fourth compartment muscles so this is third compartment and if i am following it it is becoming muscle so as i told the extensor pollicis longus muscle is your deep compartment muscles along with the on the lateral side we are having this so these are the superficial extensor digitorum muscles this is your extensor pollicis longus and this is your extensor indices so they are the deeper muscles so gradually going below this and going lateral so this is also an area potential area where they are crossing one muscle one compartment with another compartment we just follow it again so list of tubercle you can see the extensor pollicis longus you can see the extensor digitorum communis tendons above superficial layer and i'm going proximally you just follow it follow it follow it follow it see here please follow here you see the four tendons are very nicely seen here this is your extensor digit minimi and these are the four tendons of the extensor digitorum this is your extensor indices this is your extensor policies longus so they are starting from this side this to work and then gradually they are going there and here sometimes you know, there is a very tiny artery is there i'm just trying to focus it and the terminal branch of the posterior interstitial nerves are sometimes seen here you see the arterial pulsations there just below the fourth compartment muscles here yes very tiny is just tip of this pain you can see the pulses in you can see the pulses in there just below the fourth compartment tendons and along with that this to there is terminal branch of the posterior interstitial nerve which is supplying the extensor indices posterior interstitial nerve is a fully motor and the last muscle which is supplied is the extensor indices and now see what is happening with the extensor digitorum and extensor indices So extensor digitorum here you see here the extensor digitorum is best seen as they already shown in is so here these are the extensor one two three four this is your Extensor in the uh, extensor pollicis longus. It is extensor indices. You see, the gradually this muscle, this muscle will be becoming tendon, and then it will be coming, and these two tendons together will be going to supply the <coughs> index finger, second digit, and will be able to follow it very nicely. Again, our and this.
So this was your listed timber crew. Just beside is your extensor policies langas, and here is your extensor digitorum. And if I'm moving the index finger, Yangulta, see it is becoming tendinous. And if I'm putting it, the muscle part is coming. See, it's tendinous, and when extension is muscular. So the my tendinous junction is just follow, and you just follow this foot and see the extensor. This is extensor, and this is below the extensor digitorum. Follow this. Gradually, it is becoming tendon. Tendon. And now, the tendon which is supplying the index finger is joining with this. Just follow this middle one here. And you see what is happening. This tendon should be coming towards the index. This. You see, now it is slipping and now it is coming towards the index. Again, coming back, back here. Yeah. Yeah, back. So this index is supplied by the two extensor muscles. One is coming from the extensor digitorum, another is coming from the extensor indices. So this was your fourth compartment. And now the fifth compartment is another superficial muscles, this one, this one, and that was extensor DT minimi, and on the lateral side. We are having the extensor carpi alnus, and sometimes in this tendon, like in this patient also, you can see some fissures are there. And remember, this is not the tendinopathy; this is normal. So, six compartment. Just quick recapitulation from the medial side, from the radial side, I should say, not the medial. This is the radial side or lateral side. So you are having the first compartment, tendons are abductor policies longus, extensor policies babies, just over the radial stylate process. Then we are having the two tendons there, extensor carpi radial is longus, and babies just radial side of the listed tubercle. And then listed tubercle. And then the third compartment. Third compartment, we are having only one muscle, one tendon. That is your extensor policy slangers. And then we are having the extensor digitorum. And the before below the extensor digitorum, we are having the so this is when I'm moving it proximally, the extensor indices is becoming the deep muscle, bulky muscles. And then when coming distally, it is becoming the myotendinous, and then it is coming from the radial side, ulnar side to the radial side. You see, here it is going towards the See, the muscles is going towards the radial ulnar side. You see, the two bulky muscles. One is extensor policies longus, another is extensor indices. And when you are going distally, you see, these are becoming tendon and going radial side of this extensor digital. So, this is the area where it is crossing, just going below the extensor digital. And then we are having the extensor digital minimi, and then we are having the extensor carpi ulnus. So these are the extensor compartments. So if you are having any questions, if you wish to see anything here. Okay, another thing I forgot to show you the knob here. The posterior interstitial knob I have shown, there is a small tiny vessels in the just below the fourth compartment. But here, the superficial branch of the radial knob also is seen in this dorsal compartment. So here, we can start above below, but what I feel, what is, you know, I found that this is the you know, easiest way to put a lot of jelly there over the cephalic veins. So the superficial radial one of the important one branch just cross below the cephalic vein. And that is the area where the identifying the knob is easy. You see, can you see something is crossing below the 
क्या फल लिख दे कैन आई प्रिसीड दैट एंड इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग दैट प्रोक्सिमेटली यू सी द ग्रेप लाइक थिंग जस्ट गोइंग बिलो द कैफेलिक वेन एंड नाउ आई एम फॉलोइंग दिस यू सी ग्रेप लाइक थिंग हियर दिस इज योर रेडियल दिस इज योर रेडियल नाउ सो ऑफिशियल बेंच सो जस्ट फॉलो दिस सी हाउ इट इज गोइंग how it is going how it is going this is the radial now this is the radial now so this is the radial now grip like things here it is getting divided so at this position when i am coming more proximal this side is your the, the radius this side is your radial artery and here is your nerve and you can trace it from here or as i told you i feel it comfortable You know, to see, find it such is just below the, you know, you see, this is the area where it is crossing. You know, because why? Because just below the blood vessel, there is an, you know, the hyperechoic shadows normally. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Somebody is asking you to use the pointer. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, this is the radial now. Huh? So what is the radial now? If I am coming distally, it is just going below the cephalic vein. Can you appreciate it here? And don't press it. Put lot of jelly, and you can see the radial. You see the radial nerve is going crossing just below the cephalic vein. And now this is your radial now. This is your radial now. This is radial now. See now it is going more towards the radial artery. Here it is. So my pointer is visible, no, Kanchan? Yes, sir. So this is your now. This is your now. So honeycomb-like appearance here. This is the now. And here, if when I am coming more proximally, it is in between the. So you can stretch from here as well, in between the you know the this artery and the the bone. You can see this, and you can trace it below, or you can trace it from above. So this is your superficial. radial so now any questions regarding the dorsal compartments extensor side okay yes if anyone want to see any part again i can demonstrate it nothing everybody has understood nicely so you understood the proximal and the distal intersection areas as well now i'll be coming to the volar side or flexor side so here <coughs> we'll be starting with the distal again let me tell you this my aspect marker is on the radial side and on the screen left hand side of the screen is your the aspect marker so i am putting my probe over the distal radio ulnar joint and you can see this muscle is your pronator pronator quadratus so you see this is your radius this is your ulna This is your radial artery, and this ah, muscle. Ah, maybe link भेज रही हूँ आप देखो ना आप order कर दो तो. Pronator quadratus muscle. नहीं कर लूँगा. So we are starting from there, and then we are. You see, this is your radius. Let's see, let's see. So. Here, what was seeing? What you are seeing? This side is radius. This is your ulna. You can see the pronator quadratus muscle. And then, when we are going distally, 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 that this is still radius. And then, radius is ending, and some hyperechoic structures is starts appearing. So, what is this bone? This is your lunate. So, you can see that when you are talking about the, you know, the cup or U inverted U. So, top of that. 
it was your lunate. So the just muscle what is appearing is your lunate. This. So this is your lunate. This is your scaphoid. But here the trichectum is not seen. It is not little deeper. You know the because as I told you, this area is your TFCC area. So that is the reason why in the same line we won't be able to see the all the three bones together. Unfix. So again, pronator coordinators, distal radius, and now the bone which is appearing is your the lunate. And on this side is your scaphoid. And now, if I'm going still more distally, then only the trichotrium will be starting. And after that, the PC form is starting. Trichot over the trichotrium, the PC form is starting. And now we are in the area of the proximal carpal tunnel. This. So here you see, as I was mentioning in my PPT as well, that here lunate has disappeared. So what you can see here, the radial side, we are having the tubercle of the scaphoid. Then is your, this is your PC form. Below that, sometimes trichotrium is seen, sometimes trichotrium is not seen. So these two bones are your capitate and hamate. We are basically going to the second row of the carpal bones. So when you're putting between these two is your, we cannot see the lunate anymore. And now what you can see here is your, the flexor retinocular. That is the roof of the carpal tunnel. And what you can see here outside the carpal tunnel, this side is your flexor carpi radialis. This side is your flexor carpi ulnaris. We are having the ulnar artery. We are having the ulnar nerve here. And this is your median now. This is your flexor pollicis longus. And the other tendons, flexor digitum superficialis, and the profundus are not seen here because they are dipping down and it is becoming the aneuic, so we can't see them. So we have to tilt it to see the tendons better. And sometimes what happens, the, all the structures are not seen nicely together. Either you can see the bones nicely, median nerve nicely, or you can see the tendons nicely. And you know, rarely you can see the, all the structures together, but I'll be just still trying it again. So you can see the lateral side, the, the scaphoid, the medial side, you can see the PC form and the base is by the hamate and the capitate. And we can see the if I'm toggling, we can see the tendons. So that just below the, the medial side is we are having the flexor just besides the scaphoid tubercle. So we are having the flexor above it is your flexor carpi ulnaris. Below the carpal tunnel, we are having the flexor pollicis longus and then the flexor digitum superficialis and profundus. And below, you see, if I'm coming a little bit more proximally, the lunate is coming. But if the lunate is coming, then you can't see the PC form and the tubercle of the scaphoid. If the lunate is disappearing, then only, you know, lunate, here is the lunate, lunate is disappearing, and then only you can see the proximal carpal tunnel bounded one side by the PC form, another side by the your scaphoid. And here you can see the, the capsule of the joint as well, which is joining the different carpal bones together. So this was here, here you can see the different, you know, the flexor digitum superficialis and the profundus masses in this area. And now if I'm going more distally, just look what is happening. This was the proximal carpal tunnel. And if I'm going, the PC form is disappearing. The scaphoid tubercle is disappearing. And now another tubercle is, will be coming from the medial side. You see now what is happening? One bone is coming just below the ulnar artery. That is your hook of the hamate. Again, let me start. Distal carpal tunnel visualization is a little difficult. Hmm. So here this is the proximal carpal tunnel. I'm going distally, 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 distally. So now the one side is your 
trapezium to go to below that sapphire for the fish curve. So now we can see the distal. So here, this is your hook of the hamlet. And above that, we are having the ulnar artery. And the nerve has started dividing here, ulnar nerve. And this is your tubercle of the trapezium. And this is your flexor retinicula. And the tendons are not visible, as I told you, because of the anisotropy. You cannot, in one section, you cannot see the, both the bones, the arteries, and the nerves together. So this is your distal carpal tunnel. So again, let us see, starting from this quadratus, rotator quadratus, distal radial joint, going distally, distally, now the radius is vanishing, now the lunate is appearing, now the lunate, you can see the scaphoid on the radial side, and then if you are going more distally, we can see here, the proximal carpal tunnel, one side fridge, one side. I'm just repeating the what we have discussed again, once again. So this is your pithiform, this is your scaphoid tubercle, median nerve, this is your tunnel, this is your flexor carpal radialis, this is your, the, here it is anisotropy, and uh, this is your flexor policies longus and the flexor digital superficialis and this tendons and these are the capitate and hamid. And when I'm going more distally, so this is a proximal carpal tunnel. So I'm going more distally, the hook of the so left side trapezium tubercle has started appearing. And the right side, this is your fridge. This is your over the hook of the hamlet. This is your ulnar artery. And this is your trapezium. And these are the <coughs> trapezium and hamlet. So now, if you wish to see the hook of the hamlet, there is another very beautiful way to see the hook of the hamlet. Because hook of the hamlet here, hamlet bone, is only part is seen this way. But hamlet fracture, hook of the hamlet fracture, is one of the very important cause for this, you know, the ulnar, ulnar nerve damage. So we can see it by orientation of the probe in this side. You know, I'm holding the probe not by this way, by this way. I'm starting from the fifth metacarpal bone. You see, the fifth metacarpal bone, you can see this is your fifth metacarpal bone. This is the fifth metacarpal bone. I'm going proximal. And you see what is happening there. This is the bone. Let's see what is that. Let me make some more gym. So here, what I'll be doing, so this is your hamlet, fix. So this is your hamlet. So this is the base of the hamlet, and this is a hook of the hamlet. And this is your ulnar artery, and here is your nerve. So here, if there is, I'll be showing some pathological. So if there is a hook of the hamlet fracture, we'll be seeing that this line, hyperechoic line is not straight, there will be break here. Again, let me show you. So here we are in the base of the, you can see this base, u separate inverted u separate bone is your, the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. And then you'll see that this bone will be vanishing anything and then one straight line is appearing fix again so this straight line is your this bone is your hamlet this is the base and this is the hook and if i'm going more proximally from here again i'm starting from here you can see this is a the hamlet base and the hook and if I'm going more proximally, again, the hamlet will be vanishing. And then, which bone will appear there? 
the two moon has appeared there. See, see, what are these two moon? This is your triquetrium. This is your piscum. Piscum means this is anterior side, as holding the probe this side. Means aspect marker on the top. So this is your piscum. This is your triquetrium. So again, see, so this is your base of the hip metatarsal. I'm going, I can see the hamet nicely, and then I'm going more proximally. I can see the pisiform and the two bone appeared, pisiform and the trichotrium. And if I'm going more, then again, these two bone are vanishing. And then, what is seen distally? What is this bone seen? Hypericular gland, this is your lunate oh, no. in between this PFCC. And then if I'm going there, this is your ulnar style address. And here will be your PFCC complex. And this is your, this is the superficial too. The PC form and the trichotrium. See how, how I am holding the probe. This side is your, the flexor side, the polar side. This side is the extensor side. So again, from here, I made then your piscium and trichotrium, and deep you can see the lunate, and then PFCC, and then the ulna. Okay, so now I'll be showing the carpal bones and some of the ligaments as well. <coughs> First from the ventral side, and then from the dorsal side. So I'll be holding first probe over the distal radius. See, this is the distal radius, very nicely seen. Let me put some gel here. So distal radius, I'm coming, coming. So what can you see here? Sit. So this is your. Radius and this is your scaphoid. scaphoid. This is your neck of the scaphoid. This is the commonest area where the scaphoid fracture takes place. So, my aspect marker was towards the proximal side and this one. So, I'm starting with the radius, going distally, 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 and see if. You know, as I was showing the different parts of the scaphoid, see, as I'm holding it over the scaphoid, the best way to see the scaphoid if you are doing the whole of the scaphoid is seen. Proximal pole, distal pole, the neck, and the articular cartilage also is seen. And over that, you can see the ligaments as well. And if I'm flexing it, you see, it is becoming smaller and with the flexion the distal radial end will be coming almost towards the neck see the distal end is almost coming towards the neck and if i am extending you can see the whole of the scaphoid whole of the scaphoid so the distal pole the proximal pole and the neck so now if i am coming little more towards the ulnar side so this was scaphoid, scaphoid is ending. And now what you can see is coming here's your lunate. So here is your, the radio, this was the radio scaphoid joint and this is your radio lunate joint. And here you can see the ligament also, the short radio lunate ligament. Short radio lunate ligament will be holding the probe straight like this. And you can see how the lunate is going. This is basically a part of the capsule, joint capsule. And you can see the articular surface as well. So now at this point, if I'm fixing the distal part over the lunate, and if I'm just tilting the proximal part, we can see the long radio lunate ligament as well. So you see how I'm holding the probe? So this is your long radio lunate ligament. Which color? So this is your 
long radial nerve ligament. And when I was holding the probe almost vertically, straight without tilting, without tilting, so you are seeing the short radial nerve ligament. This is folded. So this was your radius, lunate, capitate. So this is your short radial ligament. So short radial ligament, as I told you, telling you the V, one is this part of the V, another is this part of the V. So this is your radio lunate, this is your allo lunate, long radio lunate, this is your allo lunate, and this is your short radial lunate. And now, other part of the V. So, as I was just telling, I was fixing it over the lunate. Sorry, come here, let me. So, the radius, again the same picture, the radius, the lunate, and then capitate. Capitate is better seen if I am flexing it, you know. So now you can see the capitate, much of the capitate. And now from the capitate, I'm fixing the distal part of the probe over the capitate and I'm tilting the proximal part of the probe more towards the, so now the, what will happen? This lunate will vanish and now the scaphoid will come. Fix. So this was your, capitate. So this was your capitate. So here initially there was lunate. Now the lunate instead of that it is scaphoid is coming. And this ligament is your radio scapho capitate ligament. So this is one part of the V, radial part of the V, longer V. And the other part of the V. Again, let me go to that same unfilled. So you can see here, I was here initially, radius, lunate, capitate. I'm flexing to make the capitate more prominent. When I tilted the probe towards the radial side, I saw that radius. lunate is disappearing, scaphoid is coming and I could see the ligament, the radio scapho capitate ligament. This is a long one part of the V. And if I'm tilting to the other side, you see, I'm, I'm keeping the distal part of the probe over the capitate, and now I'm gradually moving it towards the ulna. So now the ulnar bone is coming, and this ligament is your hinge. Ulno capitate. Is your ulno capitate ligament. So this ligament is your ulno capitate ligament. <coughs> So this was, again, this was radius, this was lunate, this was capitate. Arbhati. And now, if I am, you know, this side is your, left side is your, see if I'm coming in this way, which bone I was seeing in, this is the dorsal side, this is the ventral, the volar side, now I'll be seeing it in the, dorsal part. So this was the distal radio, radio. this side is your ulnar side, left side is your ulnar side. This was distal tubercle, already you have discussed it. Now you see what is happening. Now initially we were looking for the tendon. So now we'll be looking for the bones, carpal bones and some of the ligaments. So here when I'm putting it over the distal tubercle, so this was your ulna, this was your radius, this was your listed tubercle. So now you see, I'm just going more distally, what is happening. So now the radius and ulna is disappearing, disappearing, disappearing. So now the bone is coming. Six. So what is this bone? This bone is your lunate. And this bone is your scaphoid. And this is your scapholunate ligament. Always remember, 
that all these ligaments are not visible in every individual, every volunteers. In fact, I scan five volunteers. In some, some structures are nicely visible, some structures are not nicely visible. As looking about the visibility of these different ligaments, so I have seen that this rate, the most easily visible ligament is your short and long radial lunate ligament, both on the, you know, the ventral as well as the dorsal side. And another ligament which is visible is your scapulonate ligament. This is visible in around 70 to 80 percent patients, but other small intrinsic ligament are visible in even less than 50 percent of the patients. So it varies from individual to individual. Not all ligaments are nicely visible, but bones are visible. And we can why it is not visible? Ligaments are there, but because of the orientation and because of the you know the anisotropy, we may not be able to see all these ligaments very nicely in every individuals. But when we are putting our probe over the different bones. And we can understand that here it should be the different intrinsic ligament. Okay, so let me unfreeze and let me read it. Unfreeze. So again, this was your lister tubercle. This was your ulna. I'm going more. Uh, distally and this is the radio this is your these three bones are nicely seen together please so this was your sapphire this is the radial side this was your lunate this is your trichotrium and these ligaments you can see this ligament is your scapulonate ligament the luno trichotrial ligament is also seen but again, the visibility is not consistent in every individual. Oh. So again, the ulna, the radius, and then again, the three carpal bones are coming. And if I'm going more, so you see the lunate is ending, the scaphoid and the trichotrium is still seen. And now the next bone, what is coming is your one side peeping is your hamid, another side peeping is your the capitate. So now the hamid is coming big, and this is capitate. And if I'm going still distally, the metacarpal bones will be coming. So now data scan in long axis. So this is your anatomical snap box. So remember the anatomical snap box boundary. This is by the first compartment tendons and the third compartment tendons, and base is formed by the Scaphoid and trapezium. So this is your aspect marker is on the proximal side. That means this is your radius. If I'm going down, 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 down. So here is your anatomical snap box. One side is the radius, another side is your pitch. So this is your metacarpal bones, this is your radius, this is your scaphoid, this is your trapezium. And here you can see the radial artery. So this was your unfit. So this was your first metacarpal bones. So I was going like this. First metacarpal bones, then is then was your trapezium, then scaphoid, and then your radius. So now I'll be going moving over the second one. So if I'm going over the second one, what the bones will be seeing? First is your the metacarpal bones, and then is your the trapezoid. And then your scaphoid. Remember, the distal fold of the scaphoid are articulating with the two bones. One is trapezium, another is trapezoid. That means with the first and second, we'll be seeing the trapezium and trapezoid, but ultimately over the scaphoid, finally they'll be meeting the radius. So that's when I'm going for the second one, second meter. So what you'll see here is a trapezoid, and then your scaphoid, and then is your radius. Then when you are going to the third one, what will you see? 
the third metatarsal bone, then we'll be seeing the capitate, lunate, and then radius. And then here, the fourth and fifth will be about the hamet, trichotrium, and radius. And as I told you, intrinsic ligaments are not always seen nicely. Some of the ligaments are seen nicely and some of the ligaments are not. So if you have any question, if you wish to ask me to demonstrate some structures again, I'll be happy to demonstrate it again. <laughs>